this is it, the final chapter of the Arkham franchise. We've waited four long years since the last Rock City Helm game. I know that doesn't sound like a long time, but that's like 28 dog years. But does Rock Study still have what it takes to make a good Batman game? Yeah, of course they do. I have to say, I waited years to see a game, comic book, movie, really anything to Scarecrow the moment to shine like he does in this game. However, I do have to say this game focuses a little bit too much on the titular villain, the Arkham Knight, but I'll take it anyways. This time around, the Gotham City takes center stage as the sandbox players feel to play as the Dark Knight in. The city has been completely evacuated of all non-criminal citizens outside of emergency services after the Scarecrow showed off a devastating new and more potent fear gas. Oh, I'm loving it already. Now, if that wasn't enough already for the Batman to handle, Scarecrow has gone and teamed up with a mysterious new villain called the Arkham Knight and other villains from the Dark Knight's rogues gallery. Batman has one night to save Gotham from the Scarecrow, or he risks losing the city to fear forever. This demonstration used just five ounces of my latest toxin. Tomorrow, this will seem like child's play. Gotham, this is your only warning. This game assembles some of the Dark Knight's greatest villains, from Two-Face to the Penguin to... Batman's greatest villains, huh? Something doesn't quite ring true about that statement. Wait a minute, what? How'd you take control of my channel? I recall this happening before, and with greater success, all being led by the knight's one true nemesis. I broke his back once, and I can do it again. Now sit back, Quantum, and let me handle this review. How are you even? What? My feed? No, 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 how are you taking control? I'm a child, bitch. Are you sure you got it all? Now that that bit of business is out of the way, let's get down and take a look at this supposed masterpiece of the game. I have to admit, out of the entire Arkham series, this one is the most <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Bane, I'll take over for you. But it doesn't look like you have much of a choice, anyways. <laughs> if you actually think the developer is dumb with the Batman, you have to be as crazy as well. Hmm. Me. <laughs> This time the story is purely focused on two antagonists, the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow. This streamline allows the game to dive deeper into the Batman lore and show moments that previous games didn't have time for because they were so overloaded with villains. Though sometimes, in order to stretch out the narrative, they do make the player do a lot of extra work that the detective should have been able to figure out with ease. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, we have the big man bat running all around Gotham City looking for the scarecrows making his new fair talks and he doesn't think the first check. <laughs> The one chemical production plant in all of Gotham that can even produce such a toxin. And that for some reason right now, it's operating in full swing. I know the back can be dense, but this, this is just great. Well, for the most part, this is the best original Batman gaming narrative yet. Do I come in the Batcave, start messing with all your stuff? 
You've managed to reduce the compound to its core elements. But there's nothing in there that we can trace. What if we'd been looking at this the wrong way? Instead of searching for the toxin, what if we focus on the manufacturing process? Why didn't I see this? The reaction emits a unique radiation spike. Run a scan of the city for this energy signature. It will show where Scarecrow is creating his fear toxin. Rock City's free flow combat is back. And it is still the best combat experience in not just a Batman game, but any so-called super hero game yet. I do hope we all know at this point that a 200 pound adult male really can't move like that in a suit of armor. Just watch the first 20 minutes of The Dark Knight and you'll see. And this is more in line of a certain spider, but who cares? It's fun! The last time I faced the bat in Blackgate, his flashy punches and kicks meant nothing to me. And he had to resort to hiding like a coward in order to squeak by with a victory. And this time around, the bat has his entire precious city in danger. So he has brought out the big guns to play. Mainly his car, the Batmobile. And his feathered and sea land friends. You know, half the crooks in Gotham think I feed you info. You do. Well, yeah, when there's something... The Batmobile can be a joy to drive around in, especially during Ridley's courses that he has set up all throughout Gotham. The Batmobile has two primary modes of gameplay, the first one being the classic car mode that allows you to speed through Gotham at breakneck speeds. You can even use the Batmobile if it's in close proximity and if you've built up enough combo meter to do special takedowns. Second, you have what I can only assume is called the Bat Tank. This unfortunate is what you'll spend most of this game playing as during the Batmobile segments. If the Batmobile could have done this previously, I think the Bat would have used this against me instead of slamming the damn thing into me during the Arkham Asylum incident. This behemoth would be best suited in a Frank Miller directed game. And then you have the Bat's friends. During certain segments of the game, Batman can team up with Nightwing, Robin, or even Catwoman. These are really the best moments the game has to offer. It's like a breath of fresh air seeing Batman doing team takedowns, and how effortless it is moving between controlling another Batman or one of these support characters. The game could have been an amazing multiplayer experience. The franchise's stakes have never been higher. Batman isn't chopped solo on an island, nor is he caught off guard by a riot. I would have expected that his entire Bat family would have been on call for aid in this situation. What else would be the point of having not one, but two sidekicks, if not to use them? He should get past his loner phase at this point. Because he would need all the help he can get if he wants to take me on again. The team fights are extremely fun addition. And showcase a huge missed opportunity. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Time out! So you're telling me Batman had the opportunity to team up with Catwoman, Nightwing, his own partner Robin, the boy wonder himself! and opted instead to try to save the city alone? <laughs> He's completely crazy, and I love it. <laughs> this is the fourth game in the franchise, so these additions are very welcome. But their novelty runs out pretty quickly. <laughs> are you sure, Bane? According to the back of the box, this is only the third. I got an idea, let's read it together. <laughs> As the united forces of Gotham supervillains take control of the city, the Dark Knight unleashes the new transformable Batmobile in an explosive finale to the Arkham Knight trilogy. Hmm, trilogy. According to the box here, this is only the third game. But you just said it was the fourth. It's almost as if Rocksteady is just ignoring Arkham Origins. Wow. I mean, if it was called Batman, and this is just me spitballing here, if it was called Batman, 
this has nothing to do with the other game's origins, I would believe you. I mean, this is just an epic spit in the face to the Arkham Origins guys. Hmm. Driving around in the Batmobile is fun, don't get me wrong. But not really challenging. Outside of Riddler's challenges, which are a breath of fresh air compared to the mindless collectathon that are the Riddler trophies. There isn't much to do with the car outside of just running into groups of rioters and then the repetitive tank battles. This is the last decent Batman game we'll get for a while. Rocksteady is done after this installment, so where are all the villains? I understand that in order to focus on story and the one and a half villains of this game, sacrifices have to be made to achieve a strong narrative, but this game is near desolate and villainy. You don't need to chase useless villains like Firefly around to have the same non-interactive fight three times. Three times! If you don't need to destroy multiple generic militia checkpoints, if you're going for the 100%, you'll feel like you're dragging your feet to each checkpoint, watchtower, and bam, in this massive world. There's a lot of wasted time. It could have been used adding a new villains into the mix. This game is all about potential, and a lot of it is wasted here. You still get a solid product, but the possibilities of what could have been outweigh what is present. I think I got it. Wait, wait. Oh, really got you. I'm not done yet. And boom goes the dynamite. That took way too long. <laughs> okay, finally. Now as I was saying, eh. Actually, he kind of covered everything I was going to say. Let's just move on to the pros and cons. Arkham Knight is a game that is chock full of good ideas and good set pieces. Unfortunately, due to poor execution, it is kept from eclipsing its predecessor, Arkham City. The tools are there to make something great, just most of the blueprint is recycled from previous efforts. For the pros, Arkham Knight has the best story the franchise has to offer. Combat is still the most fun you'll have in any superhero game. Driving around the Batmobile is friggin' sweet and team takedowns are amazing and easily the best part of the entire game. Why don't you take out your primitive frustrations on my automated assistance? Now for the cons, the game is really light on villains. There really are just two, and everyone else is just a distraction. The Batmobile handles like an RC race car, you hit anything and it just flips unbelievably out of control. The game really should have been multiplayer. The segments where you team with Robin, Nightwing, or even Catwoman are just awesome, and you shouldn't be able to fight with them the entire game. You should have really been able to play with a friend from the get-go. And finally, the game is very repetitive. This being the fourth game, you expect there to be something new on the table, besides for just the Batmobile. And to be honest, once you hit the 50% mark of the game, you've really done everything. It's just rinse and repeat after that. It's a nice attempt to be the Batman, but Batman in Arkham Knight gets four stars out of five. Do you really think Scarecrow's crazy enough to detonate a chemical weapon in Gotham? I won't let that happen, Jim. In case you need to reach me, it's going to be a long night. Hey, thanks for joining me in my first video I've done in a long time. Hit the subscribe button if you like this video. Also, let me know I'm not wasting my time by hitting the like button down there. And check back weekly for not only reviews, but for game news and the other insanity that my friends and I shall be getting into. Hey, my name is Quantum, and I'll see you next time.